Hey guys, welcome back to Bourbon and Smoke. Today we're going to be doing some big bourbon glazed pork rinds. So the first thing we want to do with these is some of them are going to come with a little bit of what's called silver skin or kind of this impenetrable layer of fat on top of it. You just want to go through and remove as much of that as you can. Sometimes they pull off easy, sometimes they don't. So just take a small paring knife and just kind of cut that off there. It's just going to be a lot easier to eat, very similar to very similar to the membrane on ribs. You want to be careful to not lose or remove as little meat as possible because you don't have a whole lot of meat on these to begin with. And some of this is just going to be extra fat. So I choose to leave the fat on there because I fat's flavor. So you can choose to leave it on or take it off. It is completely up to you. All right, so once you get the silver skin off, take my knife and I'm just going to put a nice little butterfly on this. You want to make sure you don't go all the way through. Probably half to three quarters of the way through is really what you want to be at. Because we're going to be, we're going to end up filling this with some delicious goodness. So once you get done cutting them open here, I'm going to put on some gloves because we're going to be dealing with some seasoning. So once you're scrubbed in, what you want to do is take the your rub, and this can be really any pork rub that you enjoy. I'm going to use the same rub that I use for pork chops on it because it has a little bit of a kick to it. And uh, my sister actually is going to be coming over and trying this with me. So I know she likes this rub as well. Biggest thing is to coat the entire loin. You want to get inside, outside, underside. Just make sure you get a nice good covering on the whole thing. You don't want to leave too much in the middle because we're going to be we're going to be filling that here in a little bit with some brown sugar and Dijon mustard and bourbon. But make sure you get everything else nice and coated up good. I'll put the link or I'll put the uh, excuse me recipe for the rub here down in the description as well. I would definitely suggest trying it. Uh, as I said before, I know I use this for my pork chops. This is kind of where I started using this. But really any pork, it is really, really good on. It adds just enough spice and sweetness where it just it complements the meat really well with pork in particular. I'm not sure I'd use it on steak or any sort of a beef roast but like I said on pork it is amazing all right so once you got the season as you like it we're gonna take bourbon I finally found a use for this basil Hayden's bottle because I don't drink it because it's not good so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna try to dr drizzle don't do that that wasn't a drizzle I'm just going to ideally lightly drizzle, as displayed there. Put the bourbon in. We're going to take our Dijon mustard. And put a nice layer of that in here. And then we're going to fill the rest of this with brown sugar. And when I mean, when I say fill it, we are going to fill it up. Basically, you want the brown sugar to be just at the top of the cavity. It's going to soak up that bourbon, it's going to soak into the Dijon. And we're actually going to make a, a sauce or a glaze out of this later as well. And there's really no measurements in this piece. It's just kind of a go by what your particular loin can fit and how much you want in it. Once you make it a time or two, um, you'll kind of get a good feel of it was it too sweet or was it too, uh, too much mustard can't really have too much bourbon but so then once you have that we're gonna hit it with another little tiny ideally bottle thank you just want to get a nice little coating on there I think we probably had enough to start off with with most of the bourbon just want to hit it with a little dab so now what I've done is over here I've laid out some butcher's twine. So I'm going to lay this on the twine and we're going to actually wrap it up 
and get it to be a nice kind of stuffed pork tenderloin. This is a little messy, so I definitely suggest doing this somewhere where you can uh, deal with a little bit of extra liquid. So once we have this, then we're just going to go ahead and tie it up. So you don't need to get this real tight. You're mainly just keeping it so it, it holds its shape. Especially at the ends, you don't want to squeeze that extra juice out. Just about like that, just so it, like I said, it holds its shape. It's not going to fall apart when you try to take it off the pan or off the off the smoker. All right, so I'm going to go get the smoker warmed up. Uh, we got to cook at 300 degrees for around an hour. I'm guessing the small one's going to get done sooner, uh, and then we're going to make a glaze for it too. That is is going to mirror kind of what we have in the middle here. It makes a fantastic dipping sauce. So I'll see you guys for that in a minute. All right, so in order to do our sauce, uh, we're gonna do equal parts, pretty much everything we put in there already, with the exception of butter. So we're gonna add in a whole half a cup of butter, and then we're gonna do a half cup of Grey Poupon, or any Dijon mustard that you prefer. And then we're gonna add a half a cup of bourbon. Now as this slowly melts down here, once it gets to a, a point where everything's kind of liquefied, we just want to whisk it all together, bring it to bring it to a very light boil. That's going to help us burn off all the alcohol in here, so you know kids can eat it. And then just keep whisking it. Uh, really, you want to bring it to a boil for about a minute, is all, um, just to get everything kind of mixed in well. And then our sauce is going to be done. So very easy sauce. This is. A fantastic Dijon sauce. Alright, so after about five, ten minutes or so, you'll start to get this. This is right where you want to be. Just want to keep whisking it. You can see we're still letting air bubbles escape. That is perfect. And when you get about this consistency, where it's starting to kind of melt down and you're, you're starting to uh, solidify just a little bit or thicken up, that's when we want to pull it off. So our sauce is done. Let's go get the uh, rest of it on. All right, so we got the smoker up to 300 degrees. We're going to drop these on. And what I want to do is hit them with some of that sauce kind of on the last half hour of, of the cook. Um, we want to hit an internal temperature of about 150 degrees before we put the sauce on. And then once we hit that, then we can actually go ahead and, uh, and throw the sauce on and then let it cook the rest of the way. So I usually try to take it off right about 160, 165. So it doesn't take that long, like I said. All right, so we're gonna throw the bigger one over here. So we'll close it up. Like I said, well, I'm gonna throw the probe in here in a second. I gotta run back in the house and grab it. And then I'm gonna probe them and start basting again when we hit 150. All right, so the last little bit of the cook here. I'm just going to spread some of this on here. Give the outside some of that delicious flavor. We are almost done. So we're at about 170 degrees right now. I got a spot test in a little bit here, but really close. I just want this to, the sauce to kind of set up on there, create a nice, delicious glaze, and then pull it off and give it a shot. All right, so we have an internal temperature of about 175, in most places 176 to 174. So I'm going to pull them out, we're going to let them rest, and then we're going to dig in. See you guys in a minute. All right, so we got the sister here finally for some food here in a little bit, and we're going to try some bourbon. And we got the sister's friend here. Keep them around a little bit longer, maybe at least. Prove myself. <laughs> yes. Well, this will prove myself here in a second. <laughs> so they're not bourbon drinkers at all. So we got a Maker's 46. So this is about a 40-ish dollar bottle normally. So I'm hoping we can... I haven't had it myself. Hand done. Yes, this is all hand dipped. Mm -hmm. And this is a Kentucky Straight Bourbon barrel finished with 10 French oak staves. So and it is 94 proof, proof excuse me. 47% alcohol. So, 
not, definitely not a heavy one, but so give it the smell. Give it the nose. Look, can you smell anything on it? A little spicy. It is a little spicy. I think it's not the nose. Yeah, like I almost get like a uh, spice rum smell to it, but I mm -hmm. know it's not. Kind of a yeah, vanilla on the mm -hmm. kind of on the end. Yeah. Not real, not real ethanol. Not, it's not. It doesn't like smell like mm -hmm. you're, you're yeah. drinking gas. Yeah, yeah. I could actually really take that right. in the nose and not. It's definitely got the Maker's Mark flavor to it. Kind of a, not grassy, but like a really light flavor. Yeah, it's not, it's not overpowering. It's not bad. I mean, I gotta drink bourbon, so. Well, now you do. <laughs> this make a good Irish coffee. <laughs> that it would. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Would, uh, yeah. Like with that little bit of spice kick to it, mm -hmm. it does have that vanilla finish. Also, like it's very, very smooth until it's sat in your mouth there and like mm -hmm. it sat in your system for just like a split second, then it kind of like you feel it radiate out. And you get a, just like get a little, a little bit of warmth, right? Yeah, you just mm -hmm. get that. It's not like it doesn't burn. Definitely it's warm. warm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not a first of all. Oh, it doesn't like warm your body down the right. by any means, but it. Yeah, it really does. It's well. And it, and it kind of stays with you too. It, it, like the mouthfeel, it stays for a, mm -hmm. a while. But I mean, for your first trick. for your first bourbon, I mean, like legitimately yeah. trying a bourbon. Yeah, not, not bad. bad. Not bad. That's amazing. Actually, yeah. no, this is this is something I can see mm. myself kind of train around. Yeah, it does just feel like silky in my mouth. Yeah, it, it's it's really oily. Like it's just mm -hmm. it kind of hangs on. It's just smooth. Yeah, feeling. Yeah, it's just the barrel aging. I have no idea. Again, I'm I, just I'm speaking out of no experience whatsoever. <laughs> I'm trying to I heard the word barrel and uh, yes. barrel aging. That's definitely what it is. I, I mean, <laughs> it's the stage. You want sure. to sound smart if you're going on YouTube. I don't want to be <laughs> right. the one infamous person that just like gets clipped into a the meme. the one infamous person that doesn't sound smart. Oh well, no, I just feel like it's gonna add to being a meme, just like a bourbon meme right there. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go finish cooking our meat, and uh, we'll see you guys in a few minutes. Yeah, get it over here. I'm starving. Me too. This isn't helping. <laughs> see you guys in a few. So, we got pork wine. This is just a dipping sauce. It's just, it's bourbon, uh, butter, and Dijon mustard. So, okay. it's basically the same thing that's inside of this, minus the butter. So, we'll get one here. Get you guys some center cuts. For you. Thank you. Got a nice little smoker on it. There you go. Maybe. Dig in, guys. Alright. This is just like falling apart in the street. Yeah, you need the knife here. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Tony and Shelby again. This is their recipe. The, we did the salmon recipe of theirs, mm -hmm. and yeah, another uh, spot-on assessment by Tony and Shelby. Perfect. And this is the same. The seasoning that I use on it is the same seasoning that you like that I make pork chop with. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's got that little, just that little hint of spice with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just kind of helps that too. It just gives a little like, a little zing, a yep. little mm -hmm. bite to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I will. Uh, we'll cut off here so we can finish eating. Uh, mm -hmm. See you guys next time. Remember to comment or like, comment, and subscribe. I think that's the way it goes on the bottom of the screen here. Great. Here ish. Uh, see you guys in the next one. And talk to you later.
try some. scene of it being zoomed in That's over true. and over. How many, how much time has he had to spend nonchalantly avoiding looking at your crotch? It's over 9,000! What 9,000? In order to edit some but see, the chicken in. The thing is, is he could have edited it out. He chose to leave it in. Alright, so the key to this is pretending that we're still waiting to eat our food. Oh, right. Because, I'm so hungry. Because, I feel like he's just gonna be like clicking through, just like furiously <laughs> trying to yeah, get like, through all this. Where crap. is the content? Okay. Alright, is, is it still recording or did you stop? No, it's still recording. Okay, good. I'm glad we got all of them.